Well, Professor Tubanjo can be reached now from Abuja Studios. Yes, I can see him. Good morning, Professor, and thanks for joining us. Well, Good being morning. a former executive of uh, the Academic Staff Union of the Universities, perhaps tell us what would you have done to see that this is over? Well, the, uh, basically, the, uh, it, is, it is not the... It's, it is not uh, the business of the executive of ASU to work out the end of a strike. This business is to negotiate uh, with the government to get uh, its demands uh, met. But quite honestly, it is not by, uh, uh, this issue is not about my experience, it is about what is going on. Today, there's really no reason why ASU should be on strike. Because government has met all the substantive issues in its discussions. And it has also met all the substantive issues in the 2009 agreement. Of course, we have all heard the news about the 200 billion paid into the central bank. And that perhaps is the last of the two issues that were discussed with the president. The other one being the and allowances. The and allowances have been paid in part, and efforts have been made to pay the rest. So there are really no issues, uh, no substantive issues left. All the issues have been met. The 70 year uh, retirement age for uh, professors, the and allowances, autonomy, all the issues in the agreement have been met. And so there's really no reason why ASU should still be out there on strike. They have actually said that, that they would love to see proof. Remember, it was on this program, uh, Dr. Okupe said that the $200 billion, uh, has been paid. And uh, the ASU president yes. did say, well, they haven't been communicated uh, on that particular payment. Don't you think that that should have been done by now, 48 hours after we had them on this program? Well, I, uh, the bro that's bureaucracy. That's the bureaucracy procedure of getting them to know. Uh, I think that they also ought to have their own mechanism for checking this thing. The central bank is a public institution. I don't see why ASU cannot uh, have somebody who liaises with the central bank. Uh, I think that these are mere, uh, yeah, quite honestly, they are petty aspects of the strike. Government has been very conciliatory. Government has met its part. And as who knows that, government will not pay 200 billion. We will not say it has paid 200 billion when it has not paid. We must learn to know that government is more serious than uh, a social club. When a representative of government comes out to say we are paid, and nobody has, uh, has uh, denied what he said in government, then we must take it serious. Let us leave this uh, little petty unionism matter and face the substantive issue of the closure of universities for five months, denying young people the opportunities to be in school and creating a backlog for those in secondary school. People have not thought of that aspect, that those who are taking jobs this year cannot come into universities. They will have to hang around for another one year, wasting away. Those who ought to graduate to go and do service cannot do it. Those who want to be doctors and do internship, everything is, uh, is clogged up by this strike. So we cannot afford another day of strike based on the triviality of we want to know, we don't want to know. The substantive issues are demands have been met. The two and agreement have been fully implemented. So let's go back to work and uh, stop trying playing games uh, for publicity and uh, showmanship, yes. But anyway, we realize that uh, ASU has always used the word, well, suspension and not uh, a call off, meaning there's always a pending strike waiting in the wings. How can we resolve this issue of uh, funding, knowing full well that uh, they have also said in 2014, which is just a couple of weeks away, they will go be going back to the negotiation table to negotiate uh, on a fresh agreement? Yeah. Yes, I guess that the, ex the experience of this past agreement will substantially help in crafting a better agreement and better implementation strategies. Uh, 
2014 uh, is, a, is still a year in which our president, uh, Jonathan, will still be on seat. You, you will see that because he's an actual president, he's an actual person, he's, there's always in this conciliatory approach to things. The federal government has not been aggressive towards us. At every point, they have released funds. They have released part of the hand allowance. And it has been paid to ASU members. In fact, that's the interesting part. ASU members received this money and kept quiet as if nothing had happened. They ought to, that should have influenced them to up to a point. But the critical point, really, is that the ASU should have called up the strike during their last Congress because the majority of the chapters wanted the strike to be called up. The figure being banded around is 62 to 38. ASU itself has not denied it. When the majority of your members decide to call off a strike, and then a few people delegate decide to still continue, then there's something wrong. It is from my experience as a, a former secretary of ASU in the University of Ibadan. Once you go to uh, to the National Executive Council with the result of a referendum, the strike is automatically called off. You don't go there and start saying, "Oh, there are still uncertainties about the." about our discussion, we want the Attorney General to sign an MOU, we want a non-victimization clause and all that. That is supposed to have been put before the chapters. And once the chapters have agreed that the site should be called off or not called off, the work of NEC is to collate and reflect the uh, uh, resolutions of the chapters. So we are talking of the, of the tail wagging the dog in this instance. And that should not be. I think that, but we've gone beyond that because I see that the federal government has met ASU's demands. Well, so ASU has no excuse not to call off this right. Well, uh, good thing here, Prof. Uh, you just reminded us of your days uh, in uh, the union. Uh, perhaps let's take you back in time. Well, the threat uh, yeah. uh, to sacking this, these lecturers, remember it happened in. Uh, well, uh, Babangida, Abacha, even Obasanjo's uh, regime, and now we're getting to see this threat. It never worked in those three other administrations. Do you think it will work this time? Well, let me tell you that under Babangida, the unions, the ASU was proscribed. And the members were on their own. They went back to work. Under Abacha, Abacha was not going to prescribe ASU. He was going to close down universities. And then, of course, I also, uh, providentially, I was in, uh, in the villa as, a, as a, an advisor. And I was made to pass on this information to some vice chancellors who quickly arranged to open the universities. So it, it, it never really went to the point. Abacha was not going to sack lecturers. He was just going to turn the university campuses into military galleries. It was going to be extreme, but he did not do it because the universities, the ASU people, called off the side. Uh, I know it's difficult to, the government would not wish to want to sack lecturers because it creates its own challenges. There are many difficulties. You cannot replace them easily. You cannot, you cannot get a PhD overnight. So it's not, it's, it's almost, but the government has the responsibility to resolve a lingering problem. Government cannot sit by and be seen not to be doing nothing. I also want to tell you that I'm a member of the council, and we looked at the, the university uh, the directive, and it was even very liberal. In spite of the way it's put in the papers, the people are supposed to, to sign register, and if they don't sign, to be queried, to answer the query, and if the query is not satisfactory, then they will be sacked. So it's not a pronouncement of a sack. The universities have their statutes and acts which prescribe how lecturers should be, should be sacked. So the universities were going to follow that. They were not just going to sack a And uh, so and if you look at those processes, for you to issue a query, it will take time. For people to answer a query, it will take time. If you have a university staff of 1,000 people answering queries, it takes time to process those queries. So the government itself has allowed for time for rationality to prevail. So by the time you are issuing the query, by the time you are answering, then you might be begin to rethink your career and future. Besides, majority of people in the university, particularly the older academics, are not in support of what is going on, but they are silent, they are quiet. They don't go to ASU meetings because they are shouted down by the younger people. 
So what you have is gradually is the iron law of oligarchy sets in, in which small groups take over and begin to work the dog. The small groups basically have their own, they are fighting many wars at the same time. When you look at the strike, you find that people are not just fighting labor union matters, they are fighting political matters, they are fighting ideological matters, they are fighting religious matters, sometimes political. A lot of members of FASFU are not, they are not PDP. They want to see PDP out of the way. They want to embarrass the PDP. A lot of members have their political ideological, some of them are radicals who don't believe in what government is doing and so on. So a, a strike is a composite of many fights. And therefore, if gradually a small group will hijack the union and begin to dictate what happens. So if you go to a NEC conference, and you begin to talk about some uncertainty after the, after the chapters are voted, then you know it's a small group interest that is now being channeled as a group interest of ASU. 